What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto with UFC middleweight Marvin Vittori, who headlines UFC Fight Night this Saturday at the Apex against Jared Cannonier. And the first thing I want to ask you, Marvin, is usually, so I'm talking to you on a Tuesday. Um, in the past, you know, Tuesday, you'd be, what, checking into a hotel, getting into a fighter hotel. Now you you live here. So are, are you at, are you just chilling at your house all fight week? What, how is this fight week different for you? Yeah, it's different, man. It's different. It's very different. I'm actually gonna still gonna go check in at the hotel right now because you know you gotta sign posters and stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely like it's definitely different. But it's not necessarily more chill because you still gotta go do all your other stuff. But um, you know, definitely different. Like you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna wake up fight day, and just drive down the street and fight. So that's definitely yeah. something that I'm not used to. But it's definitely good. You don't have to travel anywhere, you know. And um, so yeah, definitely. A lot of things were easier. When's the last time you like woke up in your own bed on a fight 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 day? Never happened. Never happened. Never happened in your entire career, huh? Never happened, yeah. Could it potentially throw you off? Like I know some guys are like, man, I don't want to do anything that's different. Like I maybe I should go to a hotel and sleep in a hotel bed. Like, did you think about that at all? Or do you think it's gonna be pretty natural? You know, it, it does not it's not gonna throw me off because I already like you know i'm acknowledging that and i'm realizing that it could be weird and it could be like you know it could be like giving you like false uh you know like 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 i don't know confidence or whatever it is like like you know false like relaxation in a sense where like you think you're just relaxing over relaxing too much just because of yeah. how you're at your house and stuff but i'm not it's not gonna throw me off but definitely it's weird and i can see how like it can be throwing off a lot of people like it's just yeah. it's just weird I mean, it, maybe I'm sure people are going to be like, Brett, get off the, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but like typically, you know, you wake up, maybe you put a suit on, you get in a little shuttle, like it feels like fight day. And now it's like, you just hop in your own car and drive yourself, like you said, to the apex. I mean, I think psychologically it, it actually could, you know, be something that, that, that feels off. For sure. For sure. No, 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 it, it, it is different. It's very different. And then even now, you know, because it's like, you still have to do a lot of this, a lot of this thing. So I'm I'm scheduling it out everything ahead of time because you know it's still like you know you still gotta get into that fight fight week mode mm -hmm. and then even though you're, you're at your own house so yeah no definitely but it's gonna be fine it's, I'm not I'm not worried about it at the end of the day you know like I've been through I've been through it all to be honest like throughout this this, this last year so it's not gonna be this that throw me throw you off but you know it is different for sure. Was it kind of appealing? I mean, you were one of those guys that like once the world started to open back up, like you've had some cool experiences. Like you went to Paris and fought Robert Whitaker, and then you were in uh, um, the O2 in England, the last one. Some guys, once they get back in front of a crowd, they don't want to go back to the apex just because of your situation. You live in Vegas. Was it a little bit easier to be like, oh yeah, I'll fight the apex again? I I'm a beat at the apex. I'm four and all at the apex. So it's okay. just a good thing. It's, it's, good, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a good streak that I have at the apex and uh I think my last fight at the Apex was uh, Costa. And so, um, yeah, and I'm, I don't mind, to be honest, it's fine. It's good with me. Um, it is what it is, man. We're, we're fighters, and of course, like, the crowd is the crowd is better, but, you know, the crowd is is, is definitely different. It's, it's a whole different vibe, but at the end of the day, we got to perform. We're performers, and crowd or not, you know, it's all right. It's definitely, like, um, I just... It's just uh, we don't want to, like, uh, you know, make sure, like, I don't get into, like, this, like, over-relaxation place in my mind because everything is next is next door. And, you know, I've been at the Apex even four or five times in the last, in the last, not in the last couple of months, even to watch yeah. other stuff. And so, so it's going to be on my toes, but that's it. That's it, man. I, you know, it's, I've been through another camp successfully. Um Feel very good about it, and um, yeah, man, this is a this is a good fight that I have ahead, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, you know, I can't wait to get it going. To be honest, does Jared Cannonier as an opponent help keep you on your toes? Like when you look at him, do you see things to uh, you know be fearful of, be wary of? Like, is he a guy that uh, kind of brings that kind of fear element a little bit to keep you on your toes? No fear, just. He, you know, he requires the best of me. That's for sure. He requires the best of me. He's, he's not there for nothing. You know, he's, you know, we, we fought pretty much the same guys. He lost to the same guys I've lost, basically. Um, 
he's there, man. Like, he's, he's, he's good, but like, it, 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 it excites me. I, I, I called this fight right after my last fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he's the only one left in the top five. So now I'm, uh, I'm knocking out all of the five. I mean, Pereira, but now he's going up. He was just shortly in the, in the, in the middle of the division. Mm -hmm. But so, um, no, he definitely requires the best of me. And um, I'm excited because um, he's going to give me a chance to show all my improvements, even from my last fight. I believe, like, it's almost been like a long camp. And this is going to be like where I'm going to really peak or even my last one before. And these are going to be, these were like two camps that I've done in Vegas. The last one was, I've said it even before. It was a, it was a lot of like changing and was a transitioning moment for a lot of things. So I feel like, um, you know, on this fight, I will peak even for my, for my last one. Mm -hmm. It's it's cool that you say uh, I like the way you phrase it um, that he's going to require the best of you. Um, why why is that? Because he's dangerous. Because he is just very well rounded. He's skilled. He's athletic. Like what 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 about him yeah. going to require the best of you? Yeah, yeah. He's well rounded, and um, you know he doesn't he doesn't check out throughout the fight. He stays there, which which uh, is a thing that I do well too, and so. <clears throat> Yeah, man, I think uh, I think he's he's a good fighter overall. Like he doesn't have major flaws, you know. He does he doesn't really look. You don't look at him and you're like, oh yeah, he does these big mistakes where I can capitalize. Oh yeah, he does have he has like this big hole. Like so, um, it excites me because we still. I mean, I'm very prepared for him, and um, even though he doesn't have major flaws, you know, it's it's. That's why you're gonna see a good fight. He's not gonna be like one of those things, like oh, like he's gonna he, he's weak there. He's gonna just bring him there and just gonna like win that fight and cruise off and just like win mm -hmm. there. You know, it's mm -hmm. gonna be a battle. But um, I'm ready, man. I mean, I'm sharp. I'm sharp, man. And you know, like it's like you you guys are gonna see a lot of like improvements. You're gonna see a lot of improvements. I believe that even even mentally, even like the way I see fighting, even like. The way I'm gonna like uh, approach the fight from the beginning, I'm happy that I'm going back to do five rounds, because even at the end of the last fight, I'm like, like I'm I want I wanted to go to a fourth round to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no, it's uh, it's just uh, yeah, I'm excited for this fight, man. It's just um, it's just gonna be a good display of of my skills, you know, and he's gonna give me the opportunity to do that because he's good too. When you have a fight like that, that you're describing where this guy is going to have be focused the whole time and he doesn't have like many glaring holes for you to take advantage of, do you start to think about like, um, this fight could come down to like a small detail. Like, like we've seen a lot exactly. of clo close rounds, like in judges, the judging has been like extremely close. And it's just like, do you kind of like, is there more attention like to detail, I guess, or like, like maybe keeping an eye on how the round is going, how it's being scored? Like, is there just a difference in mentality when you know it's going to be a very competitive fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot more study goes into it. Like, I think I think so. Yeah, it's not just like training hard and just like uh, making sure you're in shape. It's a lot of study. Uh, more study goes into it, and see how he fights. At least from my side, that's the way. That's the way I I, I had to approach the, the the whole time the whole time the the, the camp and how I'm visualizing the fight going. It's, 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 it's definitely more attention to details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I have to capitalize on those uh, smaller flaws or like, you know, he's, let's say I have an edge on like, um, on wrestling, then okay, then then I'm going to push the wrestling. I have an edge on like speed and I have two edges of speed. Like, yes, he does a little mistakes over here and there. Then, you know, that that's, that's, that's how I have to do. Like, it's not just like, uh, I know I'm better standing, uh, and if I if I uh, avoid the ground, I'm gonna win the fight. Or like, okay, he, he's not good standing, he's not good in the ground, and if I take him down, I don't have a big big advantage. It's like that. It's like, oh, understand? If he does these little mistakes, he's aware here, but he's not so aware over there. So I have to set him up for like, you know. And then and then I think, in general, for this fight, I think the more action the fight goes, even though he stays he stays pretty solid throughout the whole fight. I'm still going to take over because I'm going to land more and more and more and more and more. And he's not going to expect 
few things that I'm going to bring. I'm sure of that because mm. nobody ever seen it. So uh, you cannot prepare for those, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously I don't want you to give anything away. You don't want to give anything away, but um, I think it's, it's not surprising to me that you're talking about these improvements because you see that a lot when a fighter changes a camp, it's like, Oh, you're not going to see the improvements in the first one. You're going to see it in the second one. Cause that's when it's really starting to like sink in. What did you come to Vegas to improve on? Like when you, when you thought about your game and came off that loss against Robert Whitaker, what kind of conversations did you have with yourself in terms of like, wh wh where, where am I lacking? Well, the, the first thing, the first thing, and that was like immediate after the fight with Whitaker, I was like, I need to be kicking. I cannot just approach this fight just like a boxing fight. Because I love to box, but, you know, I got to, you know, it's like, you know, you hear, you hear all the time, these fighters, they're like, uh, yeah, I wanted to do that. But then he, you know, he was never, I was never able to do it. That's a mark of a good fighter on the other side. Like you got to force the fight where you wanted it to be. Like he's otherwise, you know, it would have been easy. Like we just, you know, so yeah, I mean, okay. I like to box, but I have to, you know, eventually I have to force these guys to box like, uh, or like, uh, you know, so definitely like the, the moment after I was like, I, I need to be kicking. That's why I went to Thailand. And then I, since then I've, I've, I've focused a lot on kicking in general, but um, yeah, no, Vegas just came out because um, yeah, I think it was a good move for me to do. And I've, I've known Vegas. I mean, like, you know, I, I was coming out here to train many times. I know, like, I had, like, a, a lot of sparring partners out here. Mm -hmm. A lot of middleweights and light heavyweights. Um, you know, I had I had, I had friends out here. And um, I, I knew, like, good coaches. Jason Melly, Dewey Cooper. You know, um, the PI, obviously, is, you know, is a game changer, like, you know, it, it's just amazing to have it as a facility. You can just always bring your coaches. Um, so, yeah, and as a base, I, I was I just thought it was a good move, you know, like good, good sparrings and um, good coaches. And then, you know, some things you never know until you try out completely. You know, you, you're not going to be able to, like, figure it out completely <clears throat> before you, 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 you put yourself into, into it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But, no, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. And, um I think, uh, I think, you know, you guys saw it throughout my whole career. I keep improving and I'm 29 and I'm still improving. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, I think, like I said, this time it's, this fight is going to show a lot of the work I've done in my past fight and for my past fight too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously I'm looking forward to uh, the improvements and the changes that you've made. And it's a, it's a big fight where, what, what exactly are the stakes? Like, what, what impact does this have on the division? I mean, I, it seems obviously very clear. Izzy's going to fight uh, in September in Sydney, going to fight the winner of Drakus and Robert Whitaker. That's what the UFC has said. So do you see this as like, hey, you make a statement and you, you, can, you, can, you can wait? Or you like, you, maybe you want to try to fight in Sydney, be a backup? I don't know. Like, are you thinking about those kinds of things at all? What, what, do, you think this, uh, what do you think is at stake in this one? Yeah, um, the stakes are high because, you know, like we're like, you know, number three, number four. Um, but I'm, I'm not looking after this fight at all, to be honest. I haven't even thought about this. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I go out and just put on a great performance. Maybe with a finish or like, you know, I just go out and just, you know, look great and show the improvement, show like the, you know, I've done another step since since my last fight. And to be honest, in my own opinion, I think, uh, you know, like Whitaker eventually is going to go fight Adesanya again. And then I'm going to end up fighting, you know, we'll see. And then, and then eventually I could, I could, I could fight the, the winner of that fight. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, but, but all my focus now is to just go out and just put on an amazing performance, the best performance of my life, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm looking for. And then, um, for sure, man. Like, you know, I, I think about this stuff sometimes. It's like, you know, and the top five in the UFC, if it was boxing, we would all be like pretty much like world champion. Like, like, like this, not like this, like top four. Like, you know, yeah. now it's so like, so that, that, these are all big fights, bro. Like, these are all big fights. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like me fighting Kanye, me fighting, uh, you know, like Whitaker or me fighting like uh, Costa back then or like, you know, like these are all like, big fights it just mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the end the major is like one big belt you know yes so these are all big fights so it could you know and then it, it all comes down to to the rest outside you know like 
So it, it, it could it, it 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 could play out in, in many ways, and uh, but if I definitely go out and just show that I'm I improved another step in in uh, as a as a as a fighter, then definitely you know like I'm gonna wait for who wins that fight, and then um, or maybe stay active. So that's what I'm saying. Like I cannot even like to uh, like predict too much about these things, but yeah. definitely my whole focus into is to go out there and just show that I've level I've I've leveled up and. Um, I'm right there, very active, 29 years old, hungry as hell, and um, ready for another title shot. Well, I'm honestly, you got me, you got me really hyped up to see it on Saturday. I, I want to ask you one more thing before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your fight week. I haven't talked to you since um, since Israel knocked out um, Alex Pajeda, and um, you know, it was one of those moments that people are very, very high on. You know, I mean, the, the this this is pretty memorable. You know, him him shooting off of the the celebration uh, arrows. You have not always been the biggest fan of Israel Adesanya. I just wonder, you know, how you felt uh, about that finish. Like, what led up to it? You know, what did you think of the entire thing? Nah, man. Like, <laughs> it's funny. You know, like I know why you're asking me this question because I'm like. Um, you know, it's hard for me to, to say good things about Israel, but but to be honest, I mean, listen, he pulled it off like that, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta give it to him every time. Every time he's going to, re, like, to trying to reget his title, like to get the title or like to gain it back, he's always finishing the fight. So he's not letting, he's not leaving it to the judges, and um, yeah, no, I mean, he pulled it off like that. I mean, listen. It was good. Like you can't say nothing about it. Like he, he see, like you know, he had his, he had his, like, uh, in, in actually, figuratively and in in, in in a real way, like he had his back against the wall, and he pulled it off. So at the end of the day, like, you can't say nothing about it. Um, with that being said, um, I didn't like, you know, I was Pereira was such a nice guy after, like, oh yeah, like you know, like well done, like shaking his hand, like, you know, all that. And, you know, you, you can tell he was just, he had the moment of his life. He just got one against Pereira that, you know, he like, he, throughout his whole life, basically beat him. And he's like, I'm done. I, was like, I don't want to see you again. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. getting the fuck out. I got my knockout, I'm out. You know, meanwhile, Pereira was like, always like, you know, always willing to give him a rematch right away. Um, but yeah, the knockout itself, nothing to say, you know, well done to him. That's a, that's a very heartwarming, man. Marvin Vittori just saying, well done to Israel Adesanya. Who would have ever thought it, man? But I'm not surprised. I know that uh, you, you, you don't love the guy, but you you respect, you know, when good things happen in the octagon. And that was that was a huge moment. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see these improvements. I'm, I'm always excited to, uh, to talk to you during fight week and then to see you in the apex, man. So uh, enjoy fight week and we'll see you on Thank Saturday. You. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you, Brett. See ya.